Hello, my name is Latoya Morris, and I am the Senior Resident General Manager for SFE with the Food and Nutrition Department, and I'm taking part in 52 weeks of reading. And today I'll be reading from Layla's Lunchbox, a Ramadan story by Reem Tharqua, and illustrations by Leah Lyon. We won't be needing this for a while, said Layla's mother, hanging up Layla's lunchbox. Imagine, I won't be eating lunch for a month, replied Layla with a twirl. I won't have to pack lunch for a month, said her mom with a bigger twirl. The year before, Layla had wanted to fast with her best friends, Hind and Israel, during Ramadan. But Layla's mom had insisted she was too small. Remembering that Layla stopped twirling, she missed her best friends. Moving from one continent to another had been hard. On the map in her atlas, North America and the Middle East were 10 inches apart, but in real life, this was so much farther away. She wished she was only 10 inches away from Hand and Israel. She knew the sign by the highway said, Peachtree City, you'll love to call it home, but she didn't agree with the sign. Abu Dhabi still did not feel like home. The next morning before sunrise, Layla's mom gently nudged her. Layla, she whispered, Sherry time. Layla chomped on her chocolate chip pancakes with her eyes closed. Delicious, she said. Come, let's pray now, said her mom. After Siri, Layla snugged back into her bed until her mom woke her up again, this time for school. As she left the house, her mom handled, handed her a note. Layla, please give this to Miss Pinsworth. Without her lunchbox to carry, her fingers felt extra free and swingy. She felt so light she skipped to school and missed the bus stop. On the school's bus, she read her note. Dear Miss Penrith, this will be Layla's first time fasting for the month of Ramadan. So it is an exciting time for us. Please exclude Layla from lunch for the special month. Thanks, Miss Malik. Layla didn't feel so bouncy again anymore. What if Miss Penworth didn't know about Ramadan? No one else would be fasting with her. She folded her note into a teeny tiny square and hid it in her book bag. Layla walked slowly to her class. Her throat felt dry all morning. When lunchtime arrived, she still hadn't given Miss Penworth her note. Layla, did you forget your lunch? asked Miss Penworth. Layla opened her mouth to speak, but no words came out. Samantha volunteered. I'll share my lunch with you, Layla. Miss Penworth shook her head. Thank you for the offer, Samantha. But Layla, please get a sandwich from the cafeteria. Layla followed her classmates to the cafeteria. Layla, do you want some of my cream roll, asked Anna. Layla thought of telling Anna that she was fasting, but she didn't think anyone at Sunnyvale Elementary School knew about Ramadan. No thanks, she said, starting to say, I just didn't bring mine. Are you sure, I asked Anna unwrapping the cream rolls. Layla watched the cream roll get smaller and smaller and she didn't feel so sure cream rolls were her favorite. She looked away, her nose still smelled the food. Layla wished she had given Miss Penworth the note. Even Isaiah's bologna sandwich looked tasty and Layla didn't even like bologna, her stomach rumbled. Suddenly, she had an idea. While everyone was busy eating, she sneaked out of the cafeteria and her stomach stopped growling. Why, Layla, it's a pleasure to see you, but what brings you here at lunchtime? asked Miss Carmen, the librarian. Layla felt safe among the books. She opened her mouth and at this time, her words tumbled out. 
Layla told Ms. Carmen that Ms. Penworth and her classmates didn't know she was fasting. She told her how she missed Hand and Israel. It felt good to tell someone all the words that had been inside of her mind all morning, especially to tell her about Ramadan. Ms. Carmen understood, you must feel so special to fast this Ramadan, said the librarian and smiled. I do, said Layla, but why is it so hard to explain? You know what I always do when I can't get my thoughts out or when I get shy about talking, asked Ms. Carmen. I just write my thoughts down. Layla got to work. She wrote neatly, adding extra loops to her capital L. She worked so hard that her cheeks turned pink. Dear Miss Penworth, I didn't forget my lunchbox today. It's Ramadan, and my mom finally let me fast. This means I won't be eating lunch for a month. Sincerely, Layla. P.S. I am Muslim. P.P.S. My mom wrote you a note, too. Here it is. P.P.P.S. Here's a poem that I wrote about Ramadan. Ramadan is a month Muslims celebrate, a time to count our blessings and appreciate Muslims fast before sunrise to sunset. But wait, that's not all just yet. Ramadan is a time for lots of prayer. We help the poor people to show we care. So in the day, I won't be eating any food, but hopefully we'll stay in a good mood. Layla hurried back to the cafeteria to join her class. Before school was out, she quietly dropped both notes onto Ms. Penworth's desk. The next morning, Layla swung her fingers as she waited for the school bus. Would Ms. Penworth like her poem? Layla hoped Ms. Penworth wouldn't think she had forgotten her lunchbox again. She slowly climbed each step on the school bus. In class, Ms. Penworth didn't say anything. So Layla wondered, what happened? At times like this, she wished Hind and Israel were there with her. They would know exactly what to say. At lunchtime, Layla's felt, feet felt heavy. She was sure Miss Penworth hadn't seen the note. Everyone would think that she'd forgotten her lunchbox again. As she was leaving class, Miss Penworth patted Layla on the back and handed her a message. Miss Penworth had made her capital L in Layla's name extra loopy. Dear Layla, I enjoyed your lovely poem about Ramadan. I am impressed that you are fasting. What a special time for you and your family must be thrilled. Would you share your poem with our class today after lunch? You could go to the library this month instead of the cafeteria. Ms. Carmen is excited to see you. Sincerely, Ms. Penworth. P.S. Ms. Carmen told me that you missed your friends and I hope you keep making new friends with our class. Layla twirled all the way to the library. She couldn't wait to share her Ramadan poem with her class. Later at Iftar, she would celebrate this day. This is the author's note. As a child, I remember growing up in Abu Dhabi, wishing I could fast with my best friends, Hand and Israel, but my mother thought I was too small, too fast. When I finally was allowed to fast, I missed their company. Like Layla, my family moved from Peachtree City, Georgia, all the way to Abu Dhabi, the capital of the United States, the United Arab Emirates. During Ramadan, I found it challenging to explain non -Muslim, to my non-Muslim friends why I was not eating lunch with them. The library became my safe place from all the fragrant, food smells, and I spent many hours enjoying good books. I hope we all have the courage like Layla to explain and celebrate our beliefs. Contrary to what some may think, Ramadan is not all about food. It is about growing up and finally being able to fast. 
So in closing, I just had a quick follow up. Um, what are some of the things that you can do to embrace cultural changes that are different than the norms that you have learned? Um, we live in a time today where this is becoming more relevant than not, and being able to embrace your atmosphere, your friends, their differences, and seeing how we all can just get along is the best route that I would suggest. And with that, um, I want to say thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your 52 weeks of reading.